So in this video, we're going to take a little bit of time to talk about some of the basic operations that you will be asked to do with vectors. We're going to talk about addition, subtraction, and an issue known as scalar multiplication within this video. We're going to look at the geometric interpretation of each of those calculations, and then do an example where we do a little bit of, of all of them rolled into one. So adding and subtracting vectors is super easy. We, we perform this process using a component-wise method. Uh, you'll notice that vector addition, the definition for it, we've got vector A with an X component of A1, a Y component of A2. Vector B has a, an X component of B1, a Y component of B2. When we add those two vectors together, all we do is we add the like components. So the X components of vector A and B get added together for the X component of the result. Same thing for the Y components. When you do subtraction, you, you, use, you use the same process. You have to be a little more careful of order because obviously addition is commutative, subtraction is not, so you have to pay a little closer attention to which vectors listed at the front, which vectors listed at the end, uh, but you still do that process component-wise. The next, the next calculation we'll talk about is known as scalar multiplication. So when you perform the operation known as scalar multiplication, it's important to recognize what the term scalar refers to. A scalar is not a vector. So a scalar is a constant, it's just a number, it doesn't have a magnitude and a direction, it just has a, a magnitude essentially. So when you multiply a vector, so you see this vector A right here, A1 for the X component, A2 for the Y component, you multiply that vector together with the scalar C, all you do is you multiply each component by the scalar and you've got your resulting vector. So it's a super easy calculation. I've heard some people describe this as distributing the scalar into the components. I guess you're kind of doing that because you're working it into the set of parentheses. It's technically not the distributive property because there's no addition or subtraction there, but that's an easy way to, to remember how you're going to go about this process of scalar multiplication. Uh, when you multiply a vector together with another vector, that is a far more difficult issue to carry out. We're going to be talking about that eventually. There are two ways to define it. One's called a dot product, one's called a cross product or one's called a scalar product and one's called a vector product. We'll talk about what all those mean in the near future. Uh, but for now, what we'll talk about is how to interpret this scalar multiplication geometrically. So when you multiply a vector together with a scalar, and you see that we have this initial vector u here being multiplied by three different scalars, one half, three, and negative two, what happens with the resulting vectors? So notice vector u travels a little bit to the right and then a little bit further upward than it travels to the right. So it has an x component that's positive, a y component that's even a little bit larger positive value. Notice this 1 half times vector u. We have an x component that's still positive, a y component that's still a little bit bigger positive, but both of them have been cut in half. So the relationship between the, the vector u and 1 half times vector u is that they travel the same direction. They, they still go to the right and to and upward with the same proportionality, but vector the vector here that's in pink has half the magnitude as the vector that we started with that's in blue does. So when you multiply a vector by a scalar, the resulting vector is gonna have a magnitude of the original magnitude times whatever the scalar is. And that's denoted symbolically right here, right? Magnitude denoted by the almost double absolute value symbols. The magnitude of vector u times the scalar gives you the magnitude of the resulting vector. Uh, this vector travels the same direction. So the vector that's in black here, three times u, travels the same direction as vector u does. But it's triple the magnitude. Uh, this vector, does not travel the same direction as vector u does. It travels the opposite direction as vector u does. Notice the scalar that we're multiplying here, multiplying by here is negative two. If vector u went a little bit to the right and a little bit more up, multiplying the components of vector u by a negative is gonna cause the resulting vector to go a little bit to the left and a little bit further down. In this case, it's it's double further to the left and double further down than vector u went to the right and up. So this vector has double the magnitude of the original vector. It does not travel the same direction as the original. It travels the complete opposite direction. We still classify these two vectors as being parallel to each other. 
So I guess the, the point to take from this is that when you multiply by a scalar, you get a vector that's parallel to the original vector. But if you multiply by a negative, you end up with a vector that travels the complete opposite direction of the original. So we'll talk a little bit about how to interpret addition of vectors on this screen. So the vectors that we're adding together on this screen are, are vector AB and vector BC. So the initial point of the first vector is A, and then the terminal point of the first vector is B. You'll notice that the vector that we're adding on to vector AB has initial point B and terminal point C. So if you plot vectors using the process that I'm about to refer to as the tail tip, and then the tail of the next vector that you're adding on to the original starts at the tip of the original vector, tail tip, the resulting vector is going to have its tail at the tail of the original vector from the plotting process, and then the tip of that vector is going to be at the tip of the second vector from that plotting process. So again, tail, tip, tail, tip, the resulting vector from the addition of the two is going to have its tail at the original tail and its tip at the final tip. Whenever we do subtraction of vectors, uh, we can actually define this as adding on negative 1 times vector BC. So think about what multiplying vector BC by negative 1 would do. Vector BC travels a little bit to the right and then a little bit further up. So multiplying that by negative 1 is going to cause me to travel to the left rather than to the right and then down rather than up. The vector that's here in pink and the vector that's down here in blue, they have the same magnitude, but they travel complete opposite directions due to the fact that we're multiplying by a negative scalar. So when we add on negative one times vector BC and use the tail tip, tail tip plotting process for the two vectors that we're putting together, the resulting vector is gonna go from the tail of the original vector to the tip of the final vector. So here's this, the difference of vector A, B, and vector B, C. So on the last screen here, what we'll do is, is we'll look at a series of calculations. They've given us two vectors, vector A and vector B. Uh, they've asked us to compute, uh, what, four different things. Vector A plus vector B, vector A minus two times vector B, and then the other two that you see here. Uh, you probably don't even need to do any work to, to do the majority of these calculations. If I'm adding these vectors together, I'm just going to add together the X components, add together the Y components to get the result. Pretty straightforward. Now this calculation is a little bit tougher, vector A minus 2 times vector B. So I, I start with 2, and then if I subtract double this, I'm looking at 2 minus 6, giving me an, a resulting X component of negative 4. And then if I start with a y component of 4, and then I subtract off 2 times the y component of vector b, what I'm really doing is I'm subtracting off negative 2. So subtracting negative 2 from this takes me up to positive 6. Uh, this calculation might be the easiest of the bunch. Whenever I multiply vector a by the scalar 3, I just triple the x components and y components of the original vector. This last calculation is the most involved because we have scalar multiplication happening twice, we have a difference happening once, and then these symbols refer to finding the magnitude of the result. So we'll go ahead and just kind of talk about this through a step-by-step -step process. So I started off by taking five times vector B and then subtracting off two times vector A. So that's a very similar calculation to what we did back here. Uh, if you need to break that down into smaller calculations, that's definitely okay to do if it helps you see and, and be more accurate. So 5 times vector B minus 2 times vector A gives me this vector. So what I know about this vector is that its X component is positive 11, its Y component is negative 13. So here is the vector 5B minus 2A. What's the magnitude of that vector? Well, for the length of this vector, I just need to apply the Pythagorean theorem to a right triangle with one leg being 11 units, one leg being 13 units, and I need to solve for that hypotenuse. So when I, when I do a squared plus b squared, and then take a square root of that to solve for c, uh, I end up with the magnitude that was desired. So hopefully that has helped. In the coming videos, we'll do some more calculations with uh, unit vectors. We'll eventually talk about some of the ways that we can multiply two vectors together.